questions. He's gonna answer them as he sees fit. Um, to go a little bit deeper. Um, from the last time that we did this, which was if you guys saw Christoph Part One, um, probably like the I that it was really like more of his background story. I kind of just want to ask him questions about why's in his life. Um. I don't know, I, just, I guess like something I've been thinking about lately and stuff. And my favorite part about this right now is that he has the like fuck face, which is good for answers because that means that we're not gonna get sugarcoated shit. And because Fatima is here and I ask him certain stuff, he might give me responses that are actually entertaining. You ready? I can still see those veins. That's not good, buddy. Are you ready? You couldn't help wait to. I mean, I'm in the last episode, man. Less than half an episode left. So what? Wait, watch after this. Are you ready? Go. All right, bro. Can you please state your name, your birthday for the record? My name is Matt Murdock. <laughs> this is what happens when you watch too much Marvel bullshit. Okay, <laughs> Matt Murdock, uh huh? My name is Oliver Green. <laughs> okay, you first like, you said that wrong. Clearly, right? evidently. Yeah. Get it? Like Green Arrow? No, the thing that you no. said that wrong trying to say it right. No, really. No, you did. No, no. <laughs> That's it's Oliver did. Queen. It's alright. I, I gave you a dark setting right now, anyways. Like, everything's kind of dark around you. So it looks like, okay. it looks like you're being interrogated right now. My name is Bond. James Bond. Uh -huh. My name is. um why do you have so many different names? I asked you to state your name and your birthday for the record. You keep giving me your fourth... This is the fourth name you use. Yeah. No, state the, your name and your birthday. I have too many personalities. It all depends Who on are you? <laughs> <laughs> the guy from the movie? What's that movie called? Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Patricia. 22. Switch. Switch? No, it's called... Switch? Is it called? Yeah, it's called. I don't know. There's one that has like 22... She, he has 22 personalities, right? Like the record, like nobody had ever had that many personalities. Some, some shit like that. Yeah, forgot. I think that's what uh, that was me. Mm -hmm. All right, so state your name and your birthday for the record, please. My name is Chris. My birthday um, is uh, December 32nd, 1947. 1947? Yeah. Okay. I, you do realize that there is not too many people living from 1947, right? That's yeah. like around the time World War Two was ending. Yeah. All right, so... Actually, it was already over. That, ending or it was over? Over. 1939 to 1945. Okay. So it was over. So yeah. you're a survivor from this era. No, because I was in Honduras. There was no war in Honduras. Oh, facts, 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 facts. It's from the last time. It's from the last time, right? Yeah. What have you been thinking about lately? What have I been thinking about lately? Thinking about people. About how I can impact and improve people's lives in a more practical sense. Not like theoretical or emotional or like, you know, conversational, but like in a... Like, if you're hungry, can I feed you? If you're thirsty, can I give you something to drink? If you're cold, can I give you my sweater? Like, in a practical sense, you know? Okay. Um. What do you feel you can do with those kind of thoughts? That thought process, if you set up in a more practical way, right? Like, if you're hungry. Mm -hmm. Um. What do you think that those thoughts take you long term? I think those thoughts uh, would take me to live a more sacrificial, more intentional, but yet more impactful life. Um. And by sacrificial, I mean it's because uh, I really want to be that guy that, uh, like, if you're cold or if you tell me, like, I like your shirt, I want to be able to take it off my chest and give it to you. Uh -huh. Like, I want to be that guy. That's my end goal. Right? So... Like, like, I want to have, like, three shirts because I've given everything away. I want to have one pair of shoes because I gave it away. And I, mean, I don't mean, like, donate, like, you know how we donate to make ourselves feel better. And so we give, like, whatever we don't wear no more. I mean, like, as I'm wearing it and I really like it, I want to be able to give it to somebody. And so I feel like uh, let me to live more intentional because you can't preach it. You can't just talk this, you know. It really has to be done. Like It's not like, oh, I, I want to do this. I'm trying to do this. No, no. Either you do it or you don't, mm -hmm. right? And it's also um, impactful because I think that way we impact people most is when we stop living for ourselves. A lot of times we're like, oh, I want to be remembered. I want to accomplish this so I can go down in history. I think the people who have gone down in history the most are people who are not thinking about themselves, but thinking about others. So that's why I want to be more impactful. So that when people remember me when I'm dead, they'll remember, you know, like my Angelo says, how the way I made him feel. And it's like I made him feel some type of way. And maybe they'll be like, oh, I have his shoes, and I have his sweater, and I have his shirt, and I have this, and I have that. Or I remember Chris bought me this, or Chris bought me that. And, this, and, and I'm not going to be able to feel good about it because I'll be dead. So it wouldn't be about making me feel good. It will be about making them feel good. 
Gotcha. I like that. Um, do you think that in the future you I know, I know like um when we when we talked earlier about this whole big mega million stuff, um you brought up like uh you know something probably very often which is organization, right? Mm-hmm. Like, um, do you think in the future that's where you're headed at? So uh, and that like the non profits? Yeah. I think in part that's ultimately my goal. My goal is uh, to serve in the biggest nonprofit, which is church. Right, that's the biggest nonprofit in, right. in American government, at least. Right, because the one that still gets the tax breaks, the one that still gets all stuff. But I think, um, I I think it's I want to be the kind of person that helps in different spheres. You know, because a lot of times we we find that niche or that that the one thing that we we serve in. But I want to be able to impact people in different areas and different spheres so that I can get different experiences. Like, for example, I can't understand what it is to be an African-American person in, in America. But I want to serve around that community so they can teach me and I can learn from there. And I can walk in their shoes at least not a mile, but at least a couple of inches. You know, I don't know what it is to, to be, you know, uh, in, in, I don't know, a different religion, a different faith walk or, or walk in a, in a different sexual orientation. Right, but I want to be able to, to to come into places where I can serve people, not as as an agenda, but more as you know. I want to be more conscious of how people are going through the struggles. Someone who's going through emotional or or uh, mental struggles, you know, that I can relate and no longer just just talk out of what I think I know, but to truly say, man, I had no idea what you were going through, and to truly become more sensible to areas that I may be blinded to because I I, I wasn't born. A certain way, or born in a certain color, or born in a certain race, or whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that that is ultimately uh, my goal would be n- to place myself in in different profit non profit areas and different organizations that do great work for a variety of people. You know, obviously, ultimately, I, I, you do want to serve the people that are like you. You know, like whether it's uh, immigrant children or whatever, you know, because I can identify to that the struggle of you know my parents leaving everything to sacrifice for me. So you do want to do that. Also, you know, people who are Christian because, you know, uh, as my faith, that's what I believe in. But I don't want to be the guy who only does that one thing. I want to impact somebody regardless of whether they believe what I believe or think how I think or talk like I talk, you know, or look like I look. Just for the sake of saying, hey, you know, you and I, we're still the same race. We're still the human race. And I value your life. And I want to fight for your life like I would for mine. Gotcha. I like that. Um, You know, well... You, okay, so you said a few things. Maybe it went over some people's heads. Why? Why would I do that? Yeah. Like, but like, like you know, like, to, and and what I mean by that is, okay, why not just you know try to get on to quote unquote like the American dream, right? Mm-hmm. And not talk about that, like the whole freedom of you know decision and mm-hmm. living your life, you know the the whole money thing, yeah. whatever. Why go that route of of love? I guess we we'll talk about. Simple, because the American dream, in my opinion, is is a different kind of slavery. Mm-hmm. And and I don't I don't mean slavery in the sense of I want to be insensitive to actual slavery and people suffering. No, that's not what I mean. I mean it's slavery in the sense that we bind ourselves to a paycheck, to a mindset, to a house, and to a car. Right, and no, and that's dope. If that's your dream, I don't I don't bash it. I understand it completely because. I have that inclination sometimes where I start thinking about, you know, I want to live here or I want to do that. I want to have this and all that. But then I also feel like it exposes in me my hypocrisy because a lot of times we say, oh, I want to, I want to get more money so I can help people. But I don't need more money to help people. If I want to help people, I'll help them right now. And so I want to choose a life that is sacrificial, a life that is intentional so that I don't have excuses when it's all said and done about I wish I could have done more. Because that's the biggest regret you hear anybody who gets to an old age, right? Young people don't get that regret because sadly they die young and they, they still had a lot they wanted. But older people, you ever hang out? If you ever have a chance, hang out around older people. You realize your life is so minuscule, so it's such a breath that you know what you're stuck on right now is not really worth it. But older people said, "I wish I would have done more. I wish I would have spent more time with my family. I wish I would have helped people more or loved people more. I wish I would have been such a jerk or so arrogant or so focused on work." Right? Like, we miss these moments, and we miss those moments because I was busy chasing the check. Right? And, and I don't want to live my life with regret. So I believe that the best way to live your life with regret is to not live for yourself. Because if I don't live for myself, there's nothing I'm going to regret that I missed out on. I'm going to be there for my friends. I'm going to be there for people who will never remember my name, who will never recognize why I would do something for them, who will be questioning because they're going to be like, this guy is always so joyful and so willing to give and so willing to share and so willing to devote himself to others. 
that I believe that their lives will be better for it and my life will be better for it. And I think that that's the idea. Think, uh, because even time when we say, oh, I'm doing things for love, we're doing it for our self-love. I don't want to live for self-love. Self-love and positive thinking are dope, but they only work for you. I want to love like real love, love that is that gives to others in spite of you, in spite of what it might cost you, you know? Mm-hmm. I think that's dope. Um, what do you see... You know, um, that common question, right? Like, what do you see something for five years? We see it for mm-hmm. ten years. I've never been able to answer that question, yeah. right? Like, you know, I hate, I hate getting yeah. asked that question. Yeah. Um, in spite of it, I'm still gonna ask it in a modified way, right? Mm-hmm. So, where do you kind of see your future heading towards to in the next few years? Let's say. I think uh, my future is gonna head up to uh, to a shock to my brain, to my heart, and to the people around me. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really lately I've been saying, you know, I gotta be intentional, I gotta be intentional, I gotta be intentional. And I think that um, that preaches well, but when people do it, it, it confuses the people around you and it confuses you because it goes against the culture and it goes the mindset of our world. So I, I feel like I'm gonna live a life that is gonna blow my own comfortable being and it's gonna blow the brains of those around me. Like they're gonna say I'm doing too much. Because, you know, it's cool when we preach it and we go a little bit out of the way. But when you completely go out completely out of your way, it's when people are like, yo, you lost track of what really matters. And I think it's the opposite. I think when we completely sacrifice everything, we know what really matters. You know? Right. So I, I think that's where I see my life. In five years, is is going out of out of me. Going out of Chris. And to like, uh, what can Chris be to you? You know, whether you need Chris as a friend, Chris as a husband, Chris as a father... Chris as, as a neighbor, Chris as a, as a whatever, you know, what can Chris be for you? That's what I, I, I feel like my life is headed for. It's going to be a Chris that is not for Chris anymore. Okay, so I, I kind of like that you really on all of the things. Why marriage? Because I, I think marriage is one of the more practical ways to provide sacrificial love. Right? We live in a, in a world where people forgot what marriage was all about. And why do I say that? Because 50% of marriages nowadays end up in divorce. Marriage isn't what can that person give me, but what can I give that person? Can I improve that person's life? Can I sacrifice for the person when they're not sacrificing for me? Can I protect them? Can I provide for them? Can I stand up for them? Can I pray for them if you pray? You know, can I do what they would not do for me? And nothing exposes your hypocrisy and your pride and your arrogance and your selfishness like having a person with you 24-7. You get me? Uh, because it's more than a band. It's more than the last name. It's you saying, dude, whether you want it or not, you said yes to this. And this is a commitment. And a lot of us, um, we, live in, we live in the facade that commitments only last till they're convenient with me. So that's why we don't ever complete the vision or the dream we have. That's why we feel frustrated where we are right now because we know we're meant for more. But we're not willing to commit to the struggle till we get to the mission or to the goal, right? And I think that the goal in marriage is not getting somewhere. It's becoming someone. And I think that that will expose to me that if I'm really willing to love somebody, that will expose to me more than anything else would. Okay, so um, taking on that mantle, right, mm-hmm. as a as a husband, um, a protector, a provider, all of those things, mm-hmm. right, that that come that come into play. Like you said, you know, it's easy to preach it, but it's another thing to do it, mm-hmm. right? So you know, how do you get out of your own way in marriage? Because you know, like, mind you, like. If you're feeling some type of way right now, mm-hmm. and you're a boyfriend, you can simply say whatever you want yeah. to say. Like, you walk away. Right? Yeah. yeah, there's mm-hmm. no real repercussion, right? You don't have to go mm-hmm. home to that person, yeah. and you guys sleep in the same mm-hmm. bed, and all that stuff. How do you get out of your own way when you're in that situation? You know, what, what do you feel you have to do um, to, like, mentally... Because mm-hmm. in a way, it's a mental preparation that you yeah, have to yeah, go through, sure, right? Sure. That you need to understand and validate within yourself mm-hmm. before you take that yeah. step. You know what I mean? Because I think that... You know, as humans, we like, as humans we all want somebody, right? At, at mm-hmm. some point in time, um, how do you get out of your own way when you're in that situation? Because now you have a whole different mantle. Yeah. Like this whole identity that you have yeah. is no longer is is almost gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. And and I think um, I mean I can't I can't speak of experience. I'm not married evidently, but I think a lot has to be with understanding. Um, that if you're focused on you, the worst thing you can do is get married. Because when it's no longer convenient, you should be able to get out of it if it's about you. 
Whereas marriage, it's about, you know, creating something with somebody else. And so you gotta understand that when you create something with somebody else, whether it's a corporation, a business or something, especially marriage, there's gonna be tension and friction. And so I think the key is to understand that in those moments of tension, you remember you chose this. It wasn't imposed on you. It wasn't a punishment. Because a lot of times we look at our blessings as punishment when we lost perspective. Like for example, have you ever known somebody who's, who's really caring about people? What would we call them when they're tripping out? You're too emotional. But when they have, when they're leveraged the right way, they're caring and they're willing to devout. Somebody who's disciplined, when, when we lose perspective, we'll call them too strict. Right? Those blessings become the burden when you lose perspective. And I think that the concept of, of, of marriage has to be understood in the sense of, I got to have the self-awareness to keep this in perspective. This is helping me become a better man. This is helping me grow. This is helping me understand, at least for me, a biblical context of love, right? Because it's a protection of Christ in the church, which is what the Bible teaches, right? At least for me. And uh, it's helping me build a foundation that can impact others. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of broken relationships. Why? Because broken people get together. A lot of times we magnify the problems in marriage. But marriage did not create the problems. It just magnified them. Right? There's a difference. If we learn to build healthy individuals, we'll have healthy marriages. But we get individuals to get together really, really messed up and then wonder why marriages didn't work. We think so. I think a lot of it has to... You said yourself, deal with it now. I think a lot of it has to be building certain health right now that can I can carry over and compromise in marriage. I don't want to feel like I'm missing out on marriage, but rather that I'm gaining something I didn't have before. Right. Now, um, I know that family is also big for you, right? You know, um, and there is still a lot of people. You know, a lot of people kind of, they they grew up in a family one way or mm -hmm. another. Some people grew up in a messed up household. And, you know, you will think that that will kind of push them away from wanting to have a family. Mm -hmm. But some people want yeah. that because, it's like, you know, I never had someone to kind of guide me. Mm -hmm. So I want to be a guidance for somebody yeah. else, right? And there's other people that are born into a household, which is really good, right? And they want to just replicate mm -hmm. that. Again, yeah. just keep yeah. it going, right? So in for you, right? Why why want to have a family? Or why be so family-oriented? Yeah, I, I think um, a big part of it for me, uh, it's the idea of legacy or leaving something that lasts. And leaving something that lasts is uh, it's more than just money and more than just a last name. It's a, it's a lasting impact in people, right? Like, it's crazy when you see somebody's child, how they're the imprint of their parents, right? Like, and I just thought about Kaylee, mm -hmm. uh, Stefan and Hector's daughter. You say it all the time. Depends on which way you look at her. She looks like Hector, she looks like Steph, right? And then the mannerisms and stuff like that. And I think it's awesome in the imprint you create, but also in the imprint you influence that person to go further than you could have ever. And I think that that is, for me, family. For me, family is a platform where... We prepare each other to love better, to live better, and to be better, right? If done the right way. And also allows us to be an opportunity for somebody else to be welcomed in that perhaps didn't have that, right? You know, you said some people who have broken homes, they, they still want to have a home. And I think that's amazing because in, in them is the idea of redemption. It's like just because I didn't, I, wasn't, I didn't have a good father doesn't mean I can't be one. I, was, I didn't have a good mother, I can't be one. I didn't have a good sibling, I can't be one. And I think that's awesome because it allows us to change stories and to make a story out of nothing. You know? mm -hmm. uh, we love the story of starting from the bottom, but nothing is doper than when a family has created a culture, has created a way of being, has created family reunions and, and this inside jokes and this inside family moments. And I think that those, those moments are, are going to be amazing for me. So I just can't wait to replicate what I've experienced and improve on what I've experienced. You know, I want my son to be disciplined like I was. But I also want to have the opportunities that I couldn't, that my parents couldn't. You get me? And I think that that will be for me yeah. a, a way of going. You know, lately we've been talking a lot about um, maybe I guess you could say more doing, mm -hmm. right? Podcasts lately, uh, inspirational, whatever you want to call it, right? But one thing that has been a constant that we usually talk about is mindset, right? Mm -hmm. And it's your mindset that kind of sets you up, mm -hmm. right, to where you're going to end up. Right? Always. Always. So, if you had to say in one word everything that you said today, because you, you talked about perspective, and we talk about mindset a lot. Mm -hmm. If you had to kind of wrap everything that you kind of said in one word, what do you think that would be? Love. 
love is uh, patient. Love is kind. Love, love does not remember the wrongdoings. Love endures it all. Love solves it all. Love hopes it all. Meaning that though you may be in a like tough moment or not, if you love, you believe that you can get some better out of this. It's not the end for you, right? If somebody, um, you know, I, I love the beautiful thing is that love allows you to see the potential in people, yeah. not the problems in people. You get me? Yeah. So it's like yeah, they're stuck, but man, there's such a gifting in them, such a talent in them. Or it also allows you to see obstacles as opportunities. It allows you to see uh, moments as impact and propellation, like propelling towards a greater future. And so for me, love, I think, you know, we, we you say it all the time, love, 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 love. And, and our culture says love, 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 love. But the bottom of culture is love towards me, love towards me, love towards me. And, and I think the real love goes outward, not inward. So your mindset changes, your habits change, your discipline changes, your culture changes, your vocabulary changes, because now you're trying to build people up, not bring them down, right? Uh, and so all these things change when your mindset is real love. And I think real love can only, under, can only be understood if it's sacrificial. If it's beneficial to me, I don't consider it love. Because then I'm, it's like, eh, everybody would do it because it's good for me. But when it's sacrificial and it doesn't benefit me, then that's real love. All right, man. I think that uh, that's gonna cut it for now. I like that. Um, you know, whenever, whenever you know, I I want to get as much chances uh, for like you know the viewers and the listeners to get in the minds of us more mm-hmm. and more. You know, um, I know we live in a in a society, a culture that's very different, right? That we kind of post up and you know do things mm-hmm. for. For you know, for you know, it could be for you know to flex yeah. or you know to show off or just to show your life. You know, uh, for me is 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 none of that. You know, when I, when I when I say you know I want to vlog on a trip or whatever, it's just because I've learned you know through my experiences watching other vloggers and stuff like that that you kind of get a peek in their life. But when you get a peek in their life, you kind of see the little things in the background mm. of their mind, their yeah. subconscious that comes out that makes them who they are. And that's the whole thing, you know, whenever I could give the viewers, the listeners, you know, the community that we're trying to build a chance to kind of get us out of our heads and just kind of understand, you know, yeah. w- where we came from, why we think how we think, you know, it could kind of give somebody some form of relation, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And some they form make more of, personal. Exactly. And then some form of, you know, if they, if they could do something, why can't I do something? Right. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. Because, you know, it's not too many examples out here right like you know it's, it's too many times that we just see people that just make it you know what i mean and whoever is around us whoever's listening whoever you know if you have the opportunity to see it now just coming up i want you guys to just understand that we're just like you you know yeah. what i mean where yeah, yeah. you guys might be in a better situation than we are you know and it could be vice versa but you know it's just your mindset you know what the choices that you decide to do now is what's going to set you up for later for sure you know so um I want to be able to do this as much as I can, you know, just give people small mm-hmm. insights because, you know, at the end of the day, like you said, you want to use different platforms to kind of get different responses from different people, you know, and this is one, right? Like yeah, this is a, sure. a platform where you can speak your mind and you can talk and have a conversation. And it's not a conversation that's a one-on-one, you know, with everybody, right? I mean, hopefully we get to that point at, at one time, right? But... At least for now, it's, you know, a platform where you could speak your mind for and people sure. could kind of just be like, okay, you know, I kind of think like this guy. And, or, you know, or disagree. That's okay, too. Right. And, you know, you kind of get more points of views mm-hmm. on different people. Because, yep. you know, for me, I think that conversation is key in anything. You know, like you just talk things out for the most part. You kind of get understanding. Whether you agree or not, yep. but you get some form of understanding, you know. So, again, um, you know, we thank Chris for putting down Daredevil for us for these last 27 minutes. <laughs> Uh, we think 27 y'all, minutes? 27 minutes, yeah. God! I'm sorry, guys. I didn't even know it was that long. <laughs> and we think... Well, it's probably like, you know, some stuff we probably got to cut out anyways. Uh, we thank you guys, you know, um, whether you're a loyal listener, a viewer or not. You know, you're a first time or you're just casually coming in every now and then. We still want to thank you guys uh, for the support, uh, for the views, for hearing us out. Again, you got anything to say, comment down below. Uh, if you're listening on this on the podcast, we understand you can't comment, so feel free to go to the Instagram. You know, it's in the link down below. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, leave us a comment on the latest picture on on, on this podcast. And yeah, 
Feel free to communicate with us, DM us, you already know how to get to us. Thank you guys once again. Because I'm down.